G'day everyone, welcome back to Organic Power. Thanks for tuning in. This is the calm before the storm. I don't know if you've seen the news, but Queensland's in for a cyclone. It's gonna come fairly far south this time. It's unprecedented, it hasn't happened for many years. And uh, we're all bracing to see what happens. It's gonna be uh, this Thursday. It's gonna make landfall as a category two. Hopefully not as a category three, because that'd be uh, fairly devastating in this area. It's a lot of houses and a lot of people. So I'll be uh, double checking all the roof tiles on the house tomorrow, making sure all the panels are secure, and we'll see how we ride it out. I'll put a picture of the storm cell on the screen now. It's gonna go down a little bit further south, do a U-turn, head back towards the coast, and on Thursday make a landfall. So anywhere between Maryborough and Lismore, which is a fairly large area. And there's a lot of people living there. So just uh, everyone should be getting prepared now, just in case. And uh, there's less chance of any incidents. We could be seeing a landfall anywhere between Harvey Bay down to uh, Byron Bay, just to the north of uh, Coffs Harbour in the south of Lismore by the looks of things or just towards the uh, outside of Lismore uh, that's kind of the southernmost point of the landfall site that we're expecting right now but yeah this tropical cyclone it looks all but guaranteed that it's going to make a tropical cyclone landfall on the Queensland coastline at the very least it's going to be a category 1 strength tropical cyclone most likely going to be pushing into that category 2 strength threshold by the looks of things at least with what the forecast is suggesting right now so it's definitely time if you live in the southeastern corner of Queensland into the northeastern corner of New South Wales it's definitely time now to be preparing for a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone impact. That includes Brisbane and the Gold Coast as well. A lot of people in the path of this system here. So definitely time to be preparing for that uh, cyclone impact of Category 2 proportions. And this is historic. This will be history in the making if this tropical cyclone comes ashore as a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone. I'll get to the forecast and what you need to be doing to prepare for the uh, for this cyclone at the end of this forecast. In today's episode, I'll take you through how I made these brackets for the fuse holders. We'll go over to Tinkercad now. It's a program you can get on your PC or Mac and you can draft up any sort of 3D item. Fairly basic program, but works well for things like this. So I'll put brackets on all three. We'll go up to the PC now and take a look. Here's how I made those brackets. I went down to the shed with the vernier, took a few measurements and jotted them down on a bit of paper fairly low tech, and then took those measurements into the program. And from there, within about 15 minutes, you can draw up what you need. It's only a basic project, so it doesn't take much. A few minutes on the computer, you've got your drawing, then you can send that over to the printer. I've got the prototype here. I've just taken it down to the shed. That uh, fit perfectly. I can now just print two more of them. They're good to go. No more amendments on the drawing. So that's always good. We'll go over to the printer now and take a look. This is the Bamboo Lab Slicer. I've transferred that file over into the slicer and then we print from there. So I want two more of them. So I'll just make a clone, put that on the bed, I can preview that project. You can see the slice there, the details, how long it's going to take, and then print the plate. Make sure we've got the correct filament. I'm using PETG, it's a bit more sturdy and great for making brackets. We'll send that through and go and take a look at the printer. The file's just been transferred through to the printer. We'll purge out the filament. We're going to use transparent PETG. And once that's purged, it'll start printing. Go 
goes running the outline of that bracket. Got two of them to print out. It's going to take 14 minutes. The first layer is fairly slow. Once it moves on past that point, she speeds right up. There it goes, it's kicked off. That's just normal operating speed with PETG. PLA goes a little bit faster. If you go to something like TPU, it's a little bit slower. But it does a great job. 13 minutes now, I'll have those two brackets ready. We'll take them down the shed and fit them up. You can see they come off the plate pretty quickly. There we go, perfect. Couple of nice brackets. That'll keep those fuse holders secure. We'll go and install them now. Let's head into the power shed. I'll turn the fans off just so we can hear. Everything's looking pretty good in here today. So no worries. Nice, nice sunny day out there. So more than enough. Got the air conditioners running inside. Here's the brackets. Those three horseshoe shaped brackets. So they're going to go over those fuse holders. You can see they fit like a glove. Very easy to come up with those designs. And you've got your part in 15 minutes. So I can screw them in now. And I'll keep that cover nice and sturdy. That's perfect. That's exactly why I bought the 3D printer. I knew it would come in handy for a whole heap of different jobs around the home. And also for the off-grid. Nice and secure there. Locked in place. There we go, all three fitted, nice and firm, pretty happy with that, that translucent PETG came out real nice, rather than waiting weeks or days for parts like we used to, now you can just print a couple of things out, I mean you're not going to be able to get everything, but it's very handy for little jobs like that, I don't know if you saw in the, one of the previous episodes, also printed out those covers there and also the ones for the circuit breakers so they've turned out really nice the circuit breakers are nice and cool so no problems with overheating it's a sunny day and uh, nice and cool in the shed you can hear the inverters working a little bit couple of air guns going and the rest of the house running and no power bill gotta be happy with that 
it's been two years now uh, not long now and the system will have paid for itself 1.6 years to go that last two years flew by so after that point pretty much free energy the batteries will last I'd say at least 10 years they don't get pushed too hard so as long as we don't get a catastrophic failure which is highly unlikely these lithium phosphate batteries are very stable I'd say we're looking at a good 10 to 15 year service out of them so uh, even at four years they've paid for themselves and they can be replaced but they're gonna last uh, four times that long all right guys thanks for watching I'll catch you in the next episode of organic power be sure to like and subscribe 